Hi guys, this is Adam Atkinson, and I'm here with the wonderful Casey Samsell, and also known as Torres, I should say. But we are here with Wine Now, Sweat Later, back again. We kind of got busy for a minute. You had qualified for the Olympia, like right after we had done our last episode. And yeah. we got to catch up in Portland. We had a wonderful time, and uh, then... We just both got busy, and I was like, this is a great time to get our podcast back together. I'm sure a lot of people have questions. A lot of people are uh, just kind of feeling that they're getting kicked down with all the show cancellation. So what not better than to hear it from a pro and someone getting ready for the Olympia and also both of us as coaches in the industry? Yeah, um, so... My plan for the Olympia is usually to start, you know, prep around July. Um, and I mean, it's, it's looking okay right now. Like I usually, like I said, I usually start in July and that's uh, when I do a nice reverse, which is all the time. Uh, so, I mean, I'm looking forward to prep. I actually wish I could start earlier because I love uh, having that challenge. So we're like, you know, we're kind of like putting a box right now. And, um, you know, I kind of thrive off of that, like just trying to like make the best out of every situation. So if not like completely dominating it, because I, you know, that's just, this is like, this is where I thrive that, you know, I guess you've, you've known that for years. Um, Absolutely. but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm going to prep re regardless of what, um, of what's going on. Uh, and I think that it's even more motivation to to like explore new things and experiment and um just see what kind of uh bodies really come out of this type of uh you know preparation and training and what the olympia is going to look like is like super exciting because it's going to be different like this is different this is a completely different stimuli mentally and physically so that excites me to be really honest with you um, I know there's going to be hard moments. There's always typically hard moments um, in prep and in life in general, even when you're not prepping. So, I mean, if you don't go through guns of blazing, you're never going to make it. That's just one of those things. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully mid-July, I'll have like my last shebang and then uh, start prep. So the biggest thing I'm hearing is that the uncertainty is just not bothering you at all. And uh you're going to prep, and of course, you would be heartbroken if it didn't happen, and I don't think we're in that phase at all with this. I, I really do think that July and August are going to really open up, and we're going to be able to start having these shows again, but just what I hear is your love of the process. You've spent all this time getting to build, and now you get to kind of reveal that hard work and correct me if I'm wrong, this might be the longest off-season you've had since probably we were together in, back in the day, if I remember right. Um, so what was going on with me beforehand was I was actually going to do the clash in April, so uh, the first week of April. Uh, so I was actually prepping for that. I mean, it was a way different prep process, but I was doing that on purpose to experiment and see what our bodies are capable of. Um, so, I mean, I started prep a little bit earlier, about three weeks earlier than I normally would. Um, and I incorporated a, an entire Hawaii vacation, um, you know, th different things on the weekends, different styles of training and things like that. And, and it was fun. So, but that, you know, that does take a little bit of extra effort and time. So that's why I started prep early. Uh, and I would have absolutely been ready for the clash with all of my fun things going on in between. So, I, I love that I have the um, that I have the guts to do experiments like that because I mean if it was the same every time it wouldn't really be as fun. So um, I was going to do the clash, but uh, as soon as we heard that it was um, postponed until later this year, it was, I think we were like three weeks before the show, and I, I just started my reverse rate from there because I figured if I'm already qualified for the Olympia, why stay dieted too much longer? Mm -hmm. and um because that's my only show this year so it's like you know it's it's not it's not worth it to me I don't have to um I might do a warm-up show before the Olympia to kind of see where I am see what little tiny tweaks I have to make going into that big day but 
other than that, like the, the Olympia is my only show this year. So that's, that's my focus. Uh, I think my longest off season was about like eight months. And that was uh, the year of 2018 after the Arnold's uh, I had gotten third place and we just kind of run into the ground. So I, uh, I started doing a, a long off season from there and that was actually my first official real off season. So you're right. I've literally only had one, but that's right. But yeah, so I guess, uh, but also too, not being completely dialed in, I've basically just kind of stayed um, kind of in an off season, you know what I mean? It, but not, you know, not too technically, but I mean, I feel good. I'm ready to, I'm ready to dial it back in, so to say. You're kind of staying put a little bit, like you've lost some body weight and just kind of sustaining around there since you have a pretty healthy middle ground right now. And yeah. uh, you're, you're definitely... You're, you're someone who's always very close to being able to get on stage in just a small amount of time. And uh, I think that's always great. I think Mike O'Hearn said it best where he said, never let people kind of see you out of shape. And he, he, he was always able to make excellent growth. And uh, yeah, Mike's always looked good. Uh, Mike's also like, well, I'll say this, and this is kind of like getting on another tangent, like Mike, always gets thrown under the bus for people not thinking he's natural. But when was the last time you saw that guy's physique change in like a really extreme way? Uh, I've never seen him have acne. I've never seen him, you know, just even look like something majorly changed on him. He's just always yeah. kind of progressively, slowly improved. And as a natural... And healthy. It has a glow about, like a glow. He has a healthy glow. Man, know? if I look at that like that at 50, my God. Like, it, people don't realize that he's 50. And uh, and for your sake, you know, being a natural competitor as well, you know, you're, you're making a very nice, consistent gains. I see it happening in your shoulders every year. You just keep getting a little more dense up top, which is awesome to see. Yeah, good for dieting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and having dynamics with your process. So yes. now have you been training at home? I think I see a barbell and uh, some bumper plates back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not have time to clean up. I did shoulders today. I'm actually going to post that video uh, because it was pretty intense. And I'm also taking the time to learn some new stuff. So um I'm not 100% at it, but uh, I've been trying to do some some really cool stuff uh, with mobility, flexibility, and just power and strength, and just stay entertained. And and it you know it only took me like you know it takes me like five or ten minutes every day to just kind of go through the motions of uh, experimenting and trying new stuff. And it it's it makes you look forward to your workout. Yeah. You know I mean? so, Have you found yourself surprisingly enjoyed enjoying what you can do at home and uh, what you've been capable of? Well, first of all, like, just let me, like, say, like, how fortunate, obviously, we are, you know, here in Nashville. We don't really have, like, the big, the big hit that you're, like, seeing, like, um, you know, the West Coast or, or anything like, or up north in New York and Boston and New Jersey. Like, we don't have that here. Mm -hmm. um, you're a little bit closer to that than me, so you might feel that more. Um, so we're definitely very fortunate, but I feel like um, I'm also fortunately thriving pretty well uh doing my stuff inside not much has changed you know because but just having structure and just remaining progressive it nothing's really thrown off you know what i mean and um mm -hmm. a little bit like just a little bit of extra rest like never really never really hurt anyone so uh just staying focused and and putting in the effort is probably like two things that i i try to wake up with every day absolutely I think maintaining a schedule is key. And I'll admit the first couple of weeks of this, I got off of my schedule. I would usually meet clients down at my gym super early in the morning. I would do some emails. Um, I would usually do like a small nap in there and then do another block of emails. And uh, a lot of times, you know, now without that accountability of having someone to meet me first thing in the morning, I can lose the uh, first part of my day very easily. And for me, I have my own personal gym, and I, I really started getting back into a good morning routine with training for myself, because yeah. 
it, to me, it's kind of a slap in the face if I have this great gym and I don't utilize it during this time. So that was number one. But two, I really needed to get back on my schedule. And I used to think that I did not like morning training because I usually did it around like nine or 10 o'clock. But honestly, if I get up and I move, my morning mentality, I didn't realize it could be like that. And yeah, it stinks getting up and it, it stinks to wake up early, but I notice I'm so much more alive the rest of the day when I get up and do some activity. And this is a great time to just kind of really focus on mental health and encourage people to exercise and encourage people to change their structure a little bit and try some new things. And uh, I really thought that I couldn't train in the mornings. And I, I think that this might be my new thing. Yeah, well, and that's cool to hear because like this, um, this whole new quarantine thing, it, it puts people in a box and it makes people, um, it makes people take on a little bit more pressure. It's there, the pressure is coming from all sides. So you can either take the pressure and fold or you could take the pressure and push back. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's one of those things. And, um, and it, that goes in different forms. You can, you can, you know, build under the pressure by literally, like you said, just changing your routine or adopting something fun and new or getting rid of a bad habit um, and making room for something new or spending more time on something you already love anything like that like that is like just such a simple way to to make something to create something out of this you know what I mean yeah. I feel like everybody should come out of this quarantine better than when we came in because no matter what time is still passing you know what I mean absolutely like well, it doesn't stop and you're one of the few people that has reached this peak of success in terms of competing but also full coaching. And when I say full coaching, you're someone that does the posing aspect. You do the diet aspect. You do the beauty aspect. Uh, I, I've seen your work with clients. And I know how inclusive you are. And when you look at a lot of the top pros, they don't do that. And, and they might sell like some workout programs and stuff like that. But when people sign on with you, it is a all inclusive program. And uh, <laughs> They, they're getting your whole heart into this. So tell me a little bit about how you're managing clients through the pandemic right now. Um, are you finding that this is helping you with your your prep and your motivation as well? Is, is you getting ready for the Olympia kind of supercharging their prep to some degree? Um, how, how's the pandemic and being a coach working right now? So... One of the hardest things for, for me, and I would say for everybody, and that's probably why not a lot of people, um, not a lot of bikini pros do the, the coaching uh, as in depth, um, is because it is super hard to manage. It is super hard to, to coach, to be coach, and then also be that inspirational competitor. You know what I mean? Because over here, I do it for myself. And I do it for all the people that told me I couldn't. I do it for all the people that are watching, for all the people that have supported me. You know, and there's, and a majority of those are my girls. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, on the other side, I'm coach and I have to, I can't let those kind of, I can't really let those intersect because the way I think about prep is not the way some others think about prep. You know what I mean? So it's hard and uh, it can get super detailed and personal sometimes. So it's really hard to separate the two. And uh, I just, with this situation going on, it's been really, really tough. Um, because I know not everyone thinks the way I do. And then, then, then there's other people out there that think, you know, in a better, more logical process than I do. You know what I mean? So it's, it's on both sides of the fence. I'm kind of trying to balance everything. And yeah. it's hard. But um, I think that, you know, the ones that are going to pull through are the ones that you're really going to see shine later on. You know, it's it's a definitely a big mindset thing and not that the ones that are, you know, putting it off aren't going to shine later, but, um, it's going to be a different feeling once they get out there for sure. It's everybody's got their own story and you create it yourself. And that's like the most beautiful thing about it. One thing that I always knew you would be successful in your coaching was just how you handled, um, 
bad placements and you know uh, you just always really were able to take the emotion out I feel like and then just really hone in on what do I need to improve on and you really were always able to keep an open mind and I think a lot of people sometimes make the assumption that you know um, and I've seen you do this where you prep at a show and you also have a client there at the show and you're giving that client 100% and you're also giving yourself 100%. And it's always amazed me how you balance that out well because I've seen a lot of coaches who go to a show, they compete and then they're not even there for their clients in the same show they competed at. And you know, you could literally get right off stage and be bombarded by a question and you show up. And that's amazing. And uh, being able to just kind of, uh, you really do keep your boundaries well. And you're, you're really amazing at that. So I wanted to let you know, like, I recognize that it's really amazing that you can pull off something that a lot of people can't do. And uh, it's really amazing to see work with your athletes and that dynamic. You're gonna make me cry. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, like those are like my most favorite moments of all time like ever like when I'm 90 and on my deathbed those are the moments that I'm gonna remember so like you know and you don't you know like, you don't expect people to remember those moments like even the competitors sometimes you don't really because you know they they know that you're there to support them and stuff like that but they don't know how much it means to the coach to be able to be there to you know to represent them you know what I mean? And be there for mm -hmm. them that day. So, I mean, it's, it's a super like emotional and deep thing. It's, I don't know. It Cause really I know is. how much you compete too, you know, where you've competed before and hopefully we see you up there again in the future. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things that like, it's, it's more, re it's rewarding to see that day just go very, very well for the whole, all parties involved. So, yeah. And you've also taught me that too, um, you know, just working with you um, for my first couple pro shows, you've really, you really showed me what showing up feels like and what showing up can do for, you know, just morale and energy and a relationship and, and things like that. And that's the big, that honestly, that's the, that's the gift right there. That's the reward. Yeah, sometimes we can't be at the shows, but we try to show up just as much through text messaging and phone support as much as possible. And uh, that, that was one of my hardest things last year was just being so divided between yeah. shows I was at versus, you know, contest dates of people that I couldn't be at. Um, it was right. very weird to the pro circuits just so different. And you know, a lot of times I would be at an amateur show where I had pros competing somewhere else. And gosh, if I could split myself in two, I would have been at both. But I always just kind of had to go where the most competitors were. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely is very tough. But you do such an amazing job with it. But thank you for saying that. I think that uh, we both put our whole heart into this. And it's been it's been hard to feel so disconnected from our clients because we can't pose them in person, we can't see them in person like we used to. But you know, I think that both of us as coaches can say we've been able to put more into what we're doing now with less travel and almost create better connection with people through this pandemic because we're we're almost the only thing people have to look forward to sometimes so i i have clients who set say like i just really look forward to hearing back from your check-in and it's the one thing i look forward to every week and that actually that's uh celeste who said that who bought my uh, nice. coffee mug here but uh yeah she you know that just makes you feel wonderful when you hear things like that and it's like, too, because, you you know, we've already talked that we spend, like, we spend more time on the computer now than we ever have because, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what habits we like about ourselves uh, coaching-wise and what habits we don't, what, you know, what things we can work on. And we're utilizing this time and we're really using it for everything that it's worth. You know what I mean? Like, if, we're, if we thought we were busy before, I feel like we're almost busier now because we get that little bit of step um, back or step out to kind of 
recreate um, things that we, we wanted to just kind of like touch on a little bit more, you know what I mean? And I, I think that's super important too, because this industry is involved, like it's evolving so fast and all the time. So it's important for us to stay up. And I, I like I said, I think this, like the quarantine, obviously it's not, you know, it's not a fortunate situation for everyone, but you have to make the best out of it, no matter what you hear is going on elsewhere. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, as being like a coach and a competitor, I feel like I've just been trying to really hit that every day. And uh, it sounds like you are too. That's great advice. I'm glad you brought that up. Kind of, you can read a lot of news reports that can put you in a negative mindset. And I've had a lot of clients send me things. Um, one of them was concerts, like co no concerts until 2020. But you got to think these are gigantic music festivals. And that's right. a lot different than like an actual bodybuilding show <laughs> so yeah. a, as these phases roll out i think uh you know really i think we're gonna start seeing a lot better um a lot more clearer picture in july and august i i really think that north americans is going to happen and everything afterwards and yeah. i don't want to say that vegas won't happen but i'm kind of like I think 75% it will happen and then I'm like kind of 25% that it might not. And so, uh, Vegas shut down pretty early too. So that's kind of helpful for that. Cause you think that they're gonna open up a little bit earlier? Yeah, I think that they'll be able to open better since they've been able to squash it. But the biggest variable is you have is how much tourism goes to Vegas, but I think we're seeing that slowdown of regular tourism right now too. So that might actually help it. But that's kind of why I say it's a little bit of a wild card right now. <laughs> well, I think so, um, just like in my heart and in my mind, I really feel like um, they probably could have pulled off Universe even, to be honest with you, I think the first weekend of, uh, of July, but um, I think they did a smart move um, just because uh, turnout wise, you know, we want, you want good quality pros, man. So, uh, you want the, you want there to be a really good turnout for your shows, especially the organization. And, uh, you want everybody to be healthy. You don't want people to get sick at these shows, you know, leave two weeks later a pro and then have some crazy flu. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, mm -hmm. that's not the point of all this. So, um, I think that that was a really good move on their part but I really do truly think that we might get to see, uh, you know, everybody show up in Vegas. And uh, I mean, we'll probably still have to kind of pop around some social distancing, but I feel good about it. So we'll see. Yeah. Do you have people preparing for Vegas now? Um, we have a, a couple of girls that want to jump into nationals as soon as they have the opportunity to do so. That's awesome. So, yeah. I have a few. I'm sure you, you do too. We're just kind of sitting tight right now. Um, a lot of my people are ready, and that's that's a hard part. They were ready to jump into um, Pit Pro, which is about two weeks away. Right. I like to be ready about four weeks early, so yeah. fair enough. <laughs> and uh, I have a few people who were going from Arnold, actually, to some more shows, and uh, they've just really been uh, hanging in there well. But what makes me happy about this is I just am so confident that my people had the mindset for what it takes to become a pro. Because just yeah. like you said, this is almost every day to you is still going to be dieting and training hard. So just because the state of what might happen, that's not swinging your mentality or what you're doing to any degree that much different. Yeah, I mean, personally, I haven't really thought about it, but I also am super focused on my team, so yeah, it helps. It, it's nice, though, when you take care of yourself like you do and you remain in a good spot in the off-season, you can really manage to get back into a show very quickly, and I, I think that makes takes that pressure off where you're like, oh, I can jump in about now. It's almost like when the news report comes out that it's on, you can turn it on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, so, and you mentioned too, like you like your athletes, athletes to be ready earlier. It's, um, it's like a conditioning thing and it's not even, uh, I mean, not, not only is it 
physically like conditioning what you see but it's like conditioning like all right their body is like gonna be able to turn out and respond exactly to everything you know exactly what we think it's gonna happen when we do it why we do it you know what i mean it's gonna everything is perfect like you know exactly how the body's gonna respond no matter what you do so that four weeks is like such a great like mindset to be ready four weeks out for a show and i feel like a lot of amateur competitors don't understand that and they think that they have to be ready like friday before the show and that's not the that's not the idea like if you're not ready prior to peak week or two weeks or three weeks prior to peak week like a lot of different variables can set your physique off you mm. want to know what works the best you should be ready 21 to 28 days before your actual show day you yeah. know what i mean i think that's a really good amount of time yeah yeah and it I also really teaches people to be able to provide themselves with the right amount of discipline to to maintain that when they do become pros you know yeah absolutely um is there anything what's what's the first thing you're going to do when quarantine's lifted <laughs> oh god uh i'll probably just do the same thing that i'm doing every day actually that's kind of where i'm at <laughs> yeah I'm, like there's nothing exciting out there for me right now i, um, I really want a nice dinner with my wife and uh we just want yeah. to support like our favorite restaurant because we know those people are probably hurting so yeah like it's gonna be so weird to just like order a soda like it's gonna be like the most giddy moment ever you're like can i please get a soda like <laughs> Diet Coke? Like, I don't know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be very, very weird. And it's gonna be like, I hope that like all these servers get like the biggest tips of their lives. Because everybody's just so giddy to be out. <laughs> that's what we were hoping too, is that it just really helps those people build back up. And um, like, I even know a lot of the coaches I've talked to, clients have lost jobs and things like that. So they've had to pause. But a lot of people are getting furloughed versus like, fired which means they're typically going to get their job back as soon as everything opens back up so that's promising so we've been uh, you know just keeping in contact with people who have lost jobs and making sure that you know we hopefully do get them back when they do uh you know get back on their feet again and uh right. i i think that's been the biggest hit to the industry is uh the the small businesses the small gyms but i truly um there's a debate right now that they think a lot of people are going to do in-home training now and and i think in-home training's great and i think it's effective and yes a lot of people have purchased equipment but when you get in a good gym you just can't beat the atmosphere of it and i know you trained at some amazing gyms in your time like uh, let's say quads gym for instance or usa gym over in uh, chicago those gyms are going to stand because you just can't be an atmosphere like that or you know gold's gym in venus it's going to be there you can't beat that atmosphere i'll say beyond limits in columbus like you just can't beat that atmosphere that gym um, cause I think you got to train at beyond limits with me a couple of times and you just, you can't beat those gyms like that. You can't, you can't have what you have at home that you get at those gyms. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's different. It's absolutely different and will always be different training at home than at the gym because you are sometimes like 50% limited in actual exercise or you are 50% limited in like actual machinery. So, and then you're, then not only is that, like you're also like 50% limited in variety. So like nobody right now, I, right, maybe like 2% of the people right now actually have like a leg press in their yeah. home. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's something that I think is like necessary. That's something that's a good calorie burner that will build your legs. You know what I mean? Just, it's, it's something like that's, that's something, the leg press can't be replaced. It could be replaced for a short amount of time, but not forever. I you know? had a girl send me a uh, picture of her home gym. She had an Icarian leg press in there. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, it's almost like a fossil. Like you don't, like now it is, you know what I mean? It's been what, like six weeks or five weeks or something like that now? Yeah. Or what, it's been a while since we've seen a gym, the inside of a gym. So, but yeah, yeah. it's like seeing a leg press, like you'd almost have like house gym envy. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have one, don't you? I do, yes. Yeah. So we've got, <laughs> we've got Magnum leg press, actually. And uh, my wife loves that thing. She, she does the leg press quite a bit. And uh, she yeah. wants one of those hammer strength V squats. And uh, I had said, well, yeah. maybe if we get rid of the leg press, we can get that. And she said, no. She says the leg press stays. She actually said, I want to get rid of your leg extension. And I was like, okay. I was like, I could maybe do that and then get a hamstring curl that does leg extensions also um, as go. one unit. So we don't have a lot of space to put more stuff in. I've already equipped it pretty well. Uh, so now it comes down to maybe doing some multi-machines to get something else we want. <laughs> yeah. No, I heard your gym is really awesome. I've heard from multiple people, not just yourself. So I'm excited to get up there and use it. Yes. When lockdown ends, we're going to have you down here. We'll probably film our next episode in a wine room, actually. That sounds good to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I want to we'll... see if I, I can't pull Oscar out here. Yeah, let's get him out. <laughs> He's like, let's get him out. <laughs> like he's a puppet in my, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay. I heard. Yeah, good job, Ben. Got the beard out. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? <laughs> you know, living a life, quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nothing changes here. You know, me and my wife have created something that has worked very well for us. And it's very easy to hit some high and low times during this quarantine. And one thing we've done is uh, we've said two o'clock is the time that if you have a negative energy or <laughs> any bad news, like that is the time to unleash it. Because what was happening... <laughs> is I would start my mornings low and then midday would be like, okay. And then her mentality would like go to crap at night. And I'm like, we can't have this like two hour period where we're okay. If we just say two o'clock's the time that we unload our shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Then we're good. What do you do? Tackle each other? What, is that? <laughs> and, yeah, what, are, what are we supposed to do? Can you tell us? Yeah. So, so you this sounds work. very familiar. We just wait for two o'clock for one of us to just dump the negative. And, and <laughs> honestly, knowing that you have that hour that you can do that is really nice. I think we've done less of it. So I might get a negative email and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait till two o'clock. <laughs> this. Well, by the time two o'clock comes around, it doesn't matter anymore. So it, it kind of helps us condense like what we actually view as big deals or problems. And that's really helped us because we had like two nights in a row where I was like bad in the morning. She was bad at night. I'm like, man, we're just going to have some really rough days like this. So now we're kind of, you know, two o'clock where the negative energy comes out and then it's over with. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, I think, because you and I, we get up right away, we get our coffee together and we, we go straight to like our computer and we start working because we're super excited to get our check-ins and, and go through that whole process yeah. and, uh, and see everybody's progress. And then, but you know, there's once in a while where you, you receive like news that you just weren't expecting to hear and that can turn your day around for a little bit of time. So, you know, I, I definitely feel that, especially, you know, for, I guess for, you know, what we do. Yeah. Um, he gets up early and he just, he goes to work and I can always hear him, you know, he's always congratulating his, um, the people that he works with and really supporting them and stuff like that. He's always having a great morning, but by the time he's done, he's so exhausted because he's given everything that he's got, you know, to everybody all day long for 10 hours. You know what I mean? So yeah, it is. It's definitely one of those things where it just kind of like switches and the paths are a little bit different by the time you get to the end of the day. I love two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. And that time could be anything for anyone. Have you guys managed really well through the pandemic? Has it been uh, rough being locked in together? I mean, I, w I was working from home prior. Uh, I was fortunate enough to like transition in January. Um, so I mean, once March rolled around, I was kind of ahead of it. Uh, yeah. Kind of used to being home all day. Uh, but yeah, now we can't, I can't leave the apartment after I'm done with work. 
Um, yeah. So that's like a little bit like I'm done with work now. What? Right, I guess I'll just go sit on the couch. Yeah. Um, He's getting really good at video games, and I'm getting really good at bitching about his video games. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I go pay attention to me. I haven't talked to you all day. Right. Well, and you know, women in general don't watch yourself. Well, yeah, and uh, men, it, we we tend to look at like sitting down and watching TV with our wife as quality time, but women don't see it that way at all. Not at all. <laughs> and probably especially video games because you're really engaged with those so yeah that's been something that uh i feel like i'm getting all the like quality time i want because you know now that is one great thing me and my wife can do is watch tv together but i always have to remember that that's just not emotionally stimulating for her even though that's like the perfect night and evening for me <laughs> and she just could care less about what we watch, you know? It's so, we just had this conversation, literally just had this conversation. It's so funny. So it's what so we funny. tried to do is home projects together and that really bonds us pretty well. And I, I do like working with my hands and, you know, just doing something that's a little more active than emailing and that's been really helpful. Yeah, and one thing too that, I, that is really in common with like you and I, say um is that our significant others they're 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 fit and they like to work out and they're you know they're always plugged into the you know their work and stuff like that and they know when to shut it off all that you know but it's like um it's one of those things that like we always have to stay busy and when we're not busy we kind of like lose our minds yep <laughs> you know Absolutely. like why is that you know, um, I'll, I'll tell you why. And I actually did a counseling appointment specifically for this info. Um, so going back, I, I think I provide the amount of emails or the amount of people needing my help as a value to my worth. And when, when people need me, I feel very important. And uh, I, I told my wife, you know, um, there have been times in this uh, pandemic where I used to never zero out my inbox and now I have and it was weird because I should feel the success of work is done now I can go do something but on the other end oh crap no one needs me <laughs> you know <laughs> but when I say that out loud, and if I write that and down- It sounds so bizarre, because you're like, there's so many people that are still looking forward to my messages every day. Yep, absolutely. So what I would say is write these things out. If I finish my emails, what? Well, now I have more free time to do this, or now I maybe even have time to call somebody. Um, okay. I can contact my mother. There's still, and those emails are going to come tomorrow too. So when you write that stuff down, it just sounds really adolescent. And uh, when you write those thoughts and fears down, it can be very, very helpful. Yeah. And we talked about too, like, just to get away from the quarantine subject for five seconds, like, we talked about like holidays and stuff like that too. Like when we know that, you know, our clients are off enjoying themselves. They don't want to be bothered by us. You know, they don't even want like hi from us. Like, Hey, how you doing? They don't want that. They want to be left alone for five minutes so they can eat their food and spend time with their family and stuff. But, um, yep. you know, we kind of look at them, you know, like they're, you know, we have a different relationship that our view of that, you know what I mean? So we always like to just say hello. Like we're not, we don't care that you're eating your food or whatever, but, um, it's one of those things that, again, we're not as busy on the holidays, so we, like, look for stuff to do to stay busy so we can, like, stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes I end up, like, exerting myself so much that I can't even enjoy the holidays. Right. Absolutely. So I think for you, just kind of writing down, like, you know, mapping out you know, how you can enjoy the holidays more because I, I definitely have fallen into that category before. So during the holidays, usually our family gets together and even if I'm not emailing, I'm out in the woods, I'm chopping wood and I'm getting ready to build a fire for the family or something like that. And uh, I, I just, I, I really inherently, I like to be busy. And uh, going back to that counseling session, um, 
my father did everything, uh, especially even once he retired from work. He became, like I'll joke and say, the maid, the dishwasher, the gardener. He did everything. And I, I think looking back, and my dad has passed, I wish I could ask him. Because on the surface, you would never think I worry, right? Or I, I, I just seem so calm natured. But I think I'm such a busy body. That's my way of like coping with anxiety. And I think my dad staying busy constantly was a way for him to deal with anxiety that I didn't even realize he probably had had because I don't even think I developed it till I was older. But the other side of that is as a kid, I, I didn't really have a purpose other than going to school and getting good grades and doing that. And uh, they think that some of that's just a fear of just, not that my parents did anything wrong, but um, just making sure that I always have a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, we always just, we just want to feel needed and like we can provide, you know, some sort of support somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I know like for me, I've been like, you know, cause on the outside, you know, I look 100% good. I look almost not human, but I'm telling you right now, like so human. I've had my moments, like I've had more moments than I could count um, during this, this quarantine. I've, I've cried, I've felt stuff on a really deep level. You know what I mean? And I've panicked, I've had anxiety, things like that. And I mean, he's seen it, but uh, it's just, it's one of those things like this isn't a temporary, this is a temporary thing. It's not permanent. Um, just don't let it turn into like a vortex. Like that's one thing. Like I keep telling him every day, I go, I don't feel like myself. I don't feel like myself, but you know, if, if, um, if I really didn't, if I really wasn't myself, I'm sure he would like be able to, to tell, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. But like, it's, it is one of those things. It's a, it's on a deeper level when you're, when you have to stay so connected with yourself and other people with so many different personalities and, and uh, motivation levels and things like that. You you really do pour so much of yourself into that, and especially right now because you want to be there for everyone else. So yeah, it, yeah, it's it's hard to, to kind of save time for yourself. So I think that's probably where all that kind of stems from. Absolutely. No, I think that's a great great topic that we hit on right there. So yeah, me too. Um, yeah, I know we're not the only ones thinking this. So no, not at all. And, and a lot of people have varying thoughts on this, but the goal really is to come out of this quarantine better. And I think one of my clients just said it best, I'm going to come out of this with pro-worthy glutes. And uh, yeah. she really posted her progress photos. And I was like, I think you're there. I think you've, I think you've done it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, well, we could probably wrap up this episode today. This was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, this was good. So thank you so much for joining us, guys. And we can't wait to see you on the next Wine Now Sweat Later. Nice talking to you, Adam. Stay nice safe up there. Nice talking to you.